tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football, full half to be played. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Falcons' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And it'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Again, they'll run with Freeman. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And incomplete here on third down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. They'll indeed go for it with Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. They 
snap it at one. Now Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. Well, switching gears for a second, a, a neat moment before Pittsburgh's game last week. Everybody knows James Conner and how he dealt with cancer. Ten-year-old in the crowd, Charles, had a sign that he was holding, and this kid is also dealing with cancer. James Conner went over to him, met him, gave him a word of encouragement, and, and signed some things for him. That was really nice. Really cool, isn't it? Because James Conner understands what that young man's going through. I believe his name is Levi. Got his attention. They're kindred spirits. And James Conner also showed him by his play and being back out there. Beat this, overcome it, and go out and live your life the way you want to live it. And he's living it in a big way in the NFL right now, having a terrific season. And over 100 yards again this past. Touchdown, Chicago! Jordan Howard, 72 yards. And the Bears will add on to their lead. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. Perky with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Parky now set to kick it away. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, let's take a step back and look league-wide here, Charles. What contender do you think is in the most trouble through six weeks? I would not have thought Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago, but, boy, very flat performances against KC and Dallas. Yeah, and we expect them to be a dominant team on the defensive side of the ball week in and week out, and Dallas just shredded them in their game on Sunday. But I don't think Jacksonville's in as much trouble as maybe Denver is. Denver's 2-4, and four, four straight losses, and Kansas City's setting a heck of a pace in the AFC West. Vance Joseph, the second-year coach in Denver, many thought he wouldn't return after last year. Got a second opportunity. This isn't helping him. And last but not least, if we're talking about this group of people, how about the Atlanta Falcons? They're also 2-4, and four, but they got a much-needed win against Tampa Bay on Sunday. If we knew they could get their defensive players back, I'd like them a lot more. They've got a tough road ahead of them, but Matt Ryan, he can help equalize things out. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. Try and throw for it here. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the 